A whole new world, a dazzling place made just for you, me, the audience of this new book which I will eventually publish. back again with another video. I have talked about the Astros Coda series for a literal month now, so it's about time that I talk about something else. Plus, now that Semblance has finished, I need to, you know, sort out the rest of the series because so much about the plans that I made for the Astros Coda series changed while I was writing Semblance. God damn it, Woody! So I'm going completely out of the three worlds now and into my new series, Maledicts. This video is going to outline my goals for the Maledicts series and the first book so that you guys can get some early expectations as to what this series is going to be about. For what I'm hoping for will be a huge hit, my second pride and joy. So if you want to learn more about Maledicts, then hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. I post new videos every weekend on writing books and digital content for authors. And yet again, probably because I'm not going to be talking about Aster's Coder in a while, I should probably mention that it's out. Aster's Coder Exposure, available now in the description in paper book and e-back. E-back. <laughs> paper bag and e-book. There we go. Get started on the series surrounding Abby Tacker as she discovers her life between three worlds. Now, let's learn about my new work. Maledicts was originally going to be an Undertale prequel fanfiction idea that I had. If you know about that video game, you'll already have some guesses as to what this world and this story might be about. But if you don't, then I'll be here to explain it for you. Undertale is a 2015 indie game in which you play a human that has fallen into the world of monsters underground, in which you must decide the fate of them. Many prequels have already been fan-made to envision the certain lifestyles of certain characters within the story. Even those that remain an enigma and still baffle the fandom to this day. So I was no exception on getting hooked into this phenomenon. But at the same time, I wanted to solidify the Undertale magic system and explore it a little bit further. Which I actually made up my own magic system in a way. So Maledix detached itself from the indie game and decided to become a whole world and experience of its own. A magical realism world in a vaguely underground city where community means everything, loss is universal, and magic is everywhere, but not explored. They're just like you and me, except for one thing. Without their magic, a maledict could die. One such fear falls upon Echo Scotua, and no one in the underground city in which she resides is able to help her. But one man is capable of getting a thread of understanding. Dr. Tane Jorvas. The alchemist studying how to free his people from their underground prison. His studies not only bring to life Echo's condition, but the very fabric of reality and how maledicts and humans draw magic from it. Echo gains curiosity towards this as she adopts new magical abilities. In the midst of finding a connection she didn't know she was missing, it may be the connection that could save her life. So yeah, Echo and Orpheus, these two are the main characters in this series, and yep, they are love interests. I shipped them already, and I haven't even started writing about them. In terms of, like, connections between Undertale and Maledix, there's already a couple of similarities between characters. Orpheus and his little brother Theseus. They're meant to represent Sans and Papyrus in a vague sense. Dr. Jorvas is meant to represent Dr. Gaster. There's a character called Frigg who is meant to represent Undyne. And that's the characters that you'll be introduced to at the start of this series because those guys are my favorites. <laughs> but let's move on a bit more to the aim of this series. I want this series to be a fantasy romance that combines very wholesome and domestic interactions with dark edges. Like one scene, it's very calm, very cozy, very contemporary, like planning for the future or sorting out some relationship. And then the next involves all this dark and creepy magic that ends up infecting this world. Kind of like Stranger Things, but in its own sort of town that I made up completely. This will also be a very 
interesting experiment because nobody in this world truly knows the magic and their nature of it, what it can truly do. Our main characters will be discovering aspects of it in making theories and discoveries about how they can wield said magic. How they can help themselves, their people, and eventually their armies. It'll all be going into the science of magic, if you will. This has been a system which I have loved developing, and I can't wait to see how it properly plays with the characters and the discoveries that they make. I also want to explore mental health in a very prominent way. Like, I touch on it in very vague ways in the Aster's Coda series, but I never really get into it, whereas I want to with Maledix. This is something that I've already been researching in regards to Maledix and, you know, talking about it. Both the main characters, uh, Echo and Orpheus, uh, will have CPTSD, Complex Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder. But they would be, like, affected in very different ways. Like, Echo is constantly wanting to, like, validate herself because of her CPTSD, and then Orpheus refuses to trust anyone but his brother because of his. And yeah, Echo and Orpheus, they're the couple of this series, which will be very interesting because I haven't really had the chance to, you know, fully develop a romance. It happens way later in the Astros Coda series, and it happens right out the gate with Maledix. I'm imagining them together and it's already so cute and like wholesome with the ways that they support each other. It makes my little asexual heart beat because of how romantic it is. Uh, that being said, there's not going to be any sex scenes. Uh, sorry to disappoint you, but I am not sorry. I'm going to be spreading out the goals for this first book of the series because it's likely going to be multitasked a little bit because I'll be editing semblance in conjunction with writing this. It will be in terms of chapters longer than Aster's Coda. It has 35 chapters for reference and Aster's Coda has only got uh, 27. Ideally, I want to finish the first draft of Maledix before 2024. Then I might be able to get it published in 2025. Uh, this is gonna be very, uh, malleable because I haven't started writing a book whilst doing a full-time job. I was able to do it before the university and it was pretty relaxing mostly because a lot of semblance I kind of worked on during lockdowns too. And I also expect my progress to be slower based on the number of hobbies that I have like D&D, sewing, and musical theatre. That being said, I imagine this would also be an easier series than Aster's Coda because it's not high action. Like, there is, like, actual action and dramatic scenes that are gonna be going on, but they won't be to the same intensity as in Aster's Coda. I imagine Aster's Coda's action seems to be very much like the anime Ruby, where they have entire minutes dedicated to these fights, whereas Maledict's the first book in my head has probably three action scenes total. Okay, but with writing it, we will start with two chapters a month and see where it goes. That will be one chapter from Echo's perspective, followed by one chapter from Orphe's perspective. I'm aiming to post my writing progress on my TikTok, um, maybe on YouTube Shorts as well, just like monthly updates seeing how well things are going so I can have some accountability. So yeah, that's the uh, standalone plans, but the series plans, oh boy, it's seven books. Seven, why do I do this to myself? Will I ever plan something as small as or smaller than a trilogy? Uh, no, wait, I have. I just dropped those book ideas really, really quick. If I had my way, these books would all be published within the same decade. But life can be a real bitch sometimes, so I don't know if that's where that would go. I have the main idea for each book planned out. Like, the steps each character needs to take, how things are getting worse, I mean better. I've been wanting to showcase these guys in a way that made my heart sing and I'm willing to bet that this will be the series that will make me a bestseller. If I lose that bet, you'll know and I'll suffer the consequences. But I'm just so excited for Maledix to finally start. And I hope you guys are too. Like this video if you are super excited about Maledix getting worked on and coming out, and you can subscribe, ring that bell to find out when I post more creative content. Yeah, once again, Astros Coda, you can get in the description. Follow Abby Tacker as she learns about an otherworldly blood feud that spans across three worlds and how she must try and finish it. And also check me down below on my Instagram, my Fiverr, my TikTok, and my website. Stay creative, everybody, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Thank you.